Welcome back, guys. The Trading Desk, episode 19. It's Friday. Season 1 still, I think. The longest season ever, uh, apparently. So, episode 19, thanks for logging in. I'm sure we got the uh, regular guys coming in on the chat. And if you're listening on the podcast, welcome. Uh, the number one rated podcast in Canada, apparently, for a hobbies channel. So, uh, we got that, right? Uh, you'll notice this is not Josh Fidanos. Josh is uh, in Vegas at the moment, and we have with us senior watch buyer and uh, and uh, sales aficionado, or whatever you want to call me. But I've been around for quite a long time, and in, in both companies, so it's good to be here. Thank you so, for having me, Peter Bell. Uh, Peter came uh, one of the last three from Florida. From Florida, and uh, so if you're uh, not aware of, I'm sure you guys all know, but Josh and I came up from Florida. Peter was one of us. Came up from the consolidation of Watch You Want, and uh, the three of us uh, wage war on a daily basis against buy, sell, and trading watches. So uh, Peter and I do the same thing pretty much all day long, and uh, that's going to be a topic of the conversation tonight. Today, yep. And uh, Peter and I have done a, one other video that went live that was back in Florida. So right. uh, Josh wasn't here. Thought it'd be a cool time to have Peter on. Come on, and uh, we yep. can we can get a little crazy. Um, that happens to be Peter's specialty. Yes. So. Yeah. All right, uh, we're going to roll uh, in usual fashion straight to wrist shots. So I'm going to pull this down real quick. And uh, you guys will notice that I am back to wearing the 114060. That's my non-date ceramic sub. And um, this is back on the bracelet. It was on that rubber B-strap for uh, a couple weeks. And then I just was wearing the Panerai. So this is the first time I've worn this watch in probably three or four weeks. And... Uh, fell back in love with it today and I remember why it's in the collection just great every day and really the bracelet makes this watch um but if you guys have never tried one of the newer gen generation ceramic subs on um i would highly recommend that very versatile watch and then uh just for posterity's sake we're gonna roll into a knife real quick <laughs> i've been a while since i've done one of these just focus in other places um so this guy right here is actually uh made by a woman uh master blade smith Haley de rosier and there's only uh, about 27 master bladesmiths in the world, so pretty special. And uh, it takes a lifetime to become a master bladesmith. This is hand forged Damascus, single bolster, and uh, the material for the handle is actually uh, it's actually an antler. It's moose antler, which is an ex uh, no longer you can't poach that anymore. So kind of cool, kind of rare, um, pretty valuable knife, and uh, happy to have it. That's kind of like a small little hunter. Very nice. And uh, wrist shot for you, Peter? Yes, this is uh, Breitling Navitimer Montbrilliant Space Heograph. Uh, obviously, it's a pilot's watch. I brought it on for my pilot clients. Um, you know, basically what you know this is used for is when they're coming in for a landing, they uh, pretty much have a window here, a counter, um, that counts down from, from 10 minutes. Uh, kind of gives them a good indication of... Uh, you know when exactly they're going to be needing to touch down but um, I wore this for a couple uh, pilot clients of mine uh, just to remind them that they do still owe me a couple buddy passes so a uh, couple just, flight hoppers yes yep. all right so um, Peter's actually wearing his watch which is part of the next segment it's uh, that this or that poll so we have a poll tonight um, we always we always kind of want to have fun with this but so I wrote the show basically on a topic that I think is pretty important and maybe we don't touch on enough and uh, that happened to be Peter's pick for this topic and one of uh, one of the things I want to touch on is the glory days right so when brands that maybe aren't doing so well now back in the day when when they really pushed boundaries when it was really all about the watches and making something that was different and, and really pushing the envelope um, so obviously uh, you know, you can see on the this or that graphic we have up on the screen right now. And for the people on the podcast that can't see, uh, I have picked a uh, Frank Mueller. Surprising pick for me, right? Uh, not a not a huge Frank Mueller fan, but I like this watch a lot. And uh, Peter has picked the aforementioned Breitling. So I'm going to get right into the this. I'll go first. Um, if we go ahead and pull up that graphic, uh, large full screen if we can. And then we will go look at that guy. Beautiful dial. You'll notice a chronograph. This particular version has a, something a little bit, a uh, little sexy, a little hidden on the back of the case. So I'm glad to have the watch here in person. Um, we're going to go ahead and pull in on a live shot of this. So what you'll notice is 
you got a you got a really nice chronograph there, right? On the front, beautiful dial. Ronk Mueller always has beautiful dials. Those turned in corners gives it that very night to night and day vintage feel. Um, pretty nice track dial. And then what you might notice if you look a little harder is that crown is a little proud of the pushers. You can see the crown comes up off the pushers. That means there's something special on the back. So this is a first and foremost, it's a chronograph, and it's actually a mono pusher chronograph, even though it looks like a normal layout. It's a mono pusher. And then you guys probably guess what's coming, but this is the Las Vegas. So you have a roulette wheel. In case you ever need to take your watch off, gamble with some friends. There you go. And then uh, look at it go. So very cool complication. That's all spring driven. That's all real watchmaking. It's all random. And you can just do that for days. Super fun. So a very cool piece. And for me, this really harkens back to like when I first started getting into the watch game and looking at Frank Mueller as a true master of complications back before they used to just put that on the back of every case. Um, so that's why I picked this piece. I thought it really kind of spoke to the subject at hand. And I had another watch pick that I was going to do before this, which I think better elaborated my point. But uh, that watch, I was describing it to a customer and he bought it. So I couldn't bring it on the show. All right. So uh, good for him. He, he got a cool watch. Um, so Peter kind of touched on the how cool this watch is. We'll, we'll let him show it again. And then uh, just as a reminder, we have the poll. So you guys, please feel free to vote. Um, actually, we encourage you to. And then uh, look at that. Actually, uh, Pete, for, for what that is, I mean, that watch is pretty clean. I, yeah, when we pulled it out of the vault. I was surprised. Yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful piece, uh, you know, 41 millimeter which, um, you know, happens to be my size. 4041 is a good size for me. And, uh, I, you know, the reason why I picked it is because of exactly what you said. It's clean. Uh, I believe it was only made in about f a stretch of five years. Um, as you can see, the, it's turning now, the wheel. Um, I mean, the, the date, um, not date wheel. Um, the countdown. The, yeah, the countdown is, is now going to one. Um, and it'll, it'll go all the way to, I believe, um, all the way minutes. back up to 10, yep. So, so the, Yeah, and then one of the cool things with playing with this watch is it actually has half, it measures in 30 seconds, right? Mm -hmm. So it yep. has like, it has halves. you'll notice when it comes back around, I don't know if we're going to wait till it gets there, but it'll say like half between the one and the two, which is pretty neat. Um, so if, uh, for the guys that aren't watching that might just be listening while they're driving, um, it's it's basically like a jump hour there it goes. with a yep. window. Um, so normally you would see a jump hour display the hour, whereas this is digitally in an analog format displaying the minute for the chronograph as opposed to, uh, as opposed to having like a hand show the minute. So it's kind of a cool complication, not something you see a lot. Um, it's pretty rare actually, and that's what makes this piece special for me. It's also a Mont Brilliant uh, Navitimer class family in a 41 millimeter case, which we all know the, you know, the smaller size Navitimers are highly desirable. Um, and, and if I'm not mistaken, this guy's like five grand, right. $5,500. Very, very affordable for I mean, what it is. Yeah. yeah. And, and for the money, I think it's a very cool complication, great story. Um, and I, I think that's a, that's a hell of a pick. So, right. uh, I was surprised when you picked that watch. I thought it was a great pick. And, yeah, uh, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's good to educate people on what the watch is because you don't see it. Like you said, right. you don't see it around at all. And, uh, you know, again, for my pilot, uh, clients out there, it's, it's, it's a great watch, um, to have. Um, so again, you don't see it much and, uh, just wanted to get it out there and let people know that it was available. And so when I, so yeah, when, it's funny when Peter says his pilot customer, I have customers that like pilot watches. Peter mm -hmm. has customers that are pilots. Right. So yeah, it's funny. Uh, if my plane ever gets delayed, I text Peter, Peter <laughs> texts the guy and tells me why. Right. Cause the pilot that's in the cockpit of the plane I'm supposed to get on is uh, not feeling well or something like that. It's, right. it's, it's all who you know, it's, right? It's never what it is supposed to, what they yeah. say it is. Right. So. Yeah. Very cool. Yep. All right, well, uh, why don't we pull up the poll real quick, see if anybody voted yet. Josh is not here, so he hasn't voted for himself yet. Yes. Look at you. 65% nice. for Peter, 34% for the Frank Mueller. Uh, both are great pieces. I think um, for the price point, the Breitling is probably one heck of a pick. Yep. You know, And I think it's a steal for the money. Literally, it's stainless steel. Um, it's, it's a great piece for the money. I think the Frank Mueller, if you're going to spend 10 grand and go buy something funky it's it's a very cool historical timepiece awesome so we got the this or that um you know peter and i were kind of sitting around uh i knew peter was going to come on the show we were talking about what we wanted to talk about 
And uh, one of the things he mentioned, which kind of struck a chord with me, is, well, what's the show really about, right? And uh, the show is, at its core, always kind of been the trader's desk. It's a day in the life of, right? So I don't know that we've ever actually stepped back and talked about what we do on a daily basis in terms of outside of buy, sell, and trade, right? We talk about secondary market values. We talk about what watches are going to go up and go down, but we don't talk about, like, the chicken with his head cut off, running right. around, what we do on a daily basis. So I thought that might be a little bit of a kind of fun subject. And uh, Peter, you know, can obviously speak to – Peter is the guy in the office that's got – you know, he's juggling everything. So – yeah, I, it's, I mean, you I've, I've been there that, yeah. uh, quite a, you know, obviously the probably one of the longest uh, tenures um, of all of us. Um, but, you know, it's pretty much just making sure that your clients are 100% happy. And that has to do with, um, you know, obviously I tell my clients, you know, I want you to be 100% happy. So if you're not, you know, let me know now rather than a month down the road when you say, hey, I'm not really feeling it, I want to trade it back. So, I, I, I you know, on a daily basis, I just try and uh, satisfy my my customers, uh, you know, whatever they want. Whether, I, for example, today I had like I just sent out a watch today, and it was it was uh, to one of my good clients, uh, Luis, down in Texas, and uh, he, you know, has a, a little larger wrist, and uh, he was short of links. So basically, I ran around trying to get him a couple links. You know, obviously, you know, if he can't wear the watch, then it kind of defeats the purpose of him getting it. And um, you know, so I basically ran around and got him a couple links, and you know. Did did uh, you know? Got another guy a strap. So it's 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 very busy day. You know, uh, between emails, text messages, telephone calls, it's not all glamorous. Unfortunately, we wish that it was just talking about watches all day long. But it, it's pretty much you know you know buying, selling, and and everything right. that comes along with it. So what's funny is uh, Peter has a, Peter kind of started a saying, which is kind of like a mantra. And it's imagine if all we had to do was buy, sell, and trade watches. Right. You know, and that's kind of the, the mantra of the office. And ironically, like the buy, sell, and trade part kind of just happens as a result of taking care of all the other stuff. Right. And so, you know, people, I got guys that are texting me. I got guys that are WhatsApping me, emailing me, calling my landline, uh, you know, sending me packages that I didn't even know were coming in. And you got to find out it's it can be a lot and it's you know juggling all that and maintaining the chaos as i call it or when people right. call you know just trying to keep the the, the train on the tracks you know or organized chaos yeah, yeah. It, so it really comes down to being efficient with systems you know we uh we run a uh a crm a client a clientele crm we run multiple platforms plus you know peter and i and the other traders you know we have uh what is it 20 people almost now doing what we do buy and right. sell and trade granted they're not us, you know, right, but right. shout out to all the guys in the office um, watching this because they watch us um, live. And I think I see a couple of them in the chat. I see you guys in the chat. But uh, yeah, basically what it is is just maintaining all the platforms. We have, uh, you know, we run Chrono24. We run uh, different platforms. We have some sales teams in eBay. It's just, it's always managed chaos. So L for live me, live chat and yeah, yeah, there's a live chat on the website. For me, I like, you guys know, and I've talked about this. This, this is never anywhere more than 10 inches away from me. And 90% right. of my business is done off my cell phone. Um, Goes it's just, with you everywhere. And, yeah, and, and I mean. The, even into the bathroom. It's, just so you it, know. Yeah, well, that's yeah. where you get the most business done, right? Right, right. No, I mean, it has a permanent spot next to the bed. It sleeps right next to me. 90% um, of my business is done there because it's so immediate, right? And it's 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 easy to get a hold of people. Text um, messages Emails is probably. important. Text is kind of the new way of, yeah. the new way of business for me. Um WhatsApp is important for a lot of my international clients. I know you do some WhatsApp stuff. Right. Uh, WhatsApp's a good tool. If you guys don't know, uh, international calling is free through Wi-Fi on WhatsApp. Um, you know, there's a lot of good messaging services. So, yeah, it really just comes down to uh, managing the chaos and figuring out the best way to work your day. Uh, you know, you might be able to speak to this, but for me, what it is, like, sometimes I have days that are very shipping intensive, right? And you're getting your finalizing all the paperwork from all the deals and you're getting all the shipping done and then there's another day where i don't ship anything but i'm doing all the deals right so it's just ebbs and flows at that point you know pretty much i mean in the office i i, I find that it's you know your morning's filled with the watches coming in you know and maybe watches coming in for a trade so you, you know you got to make sure that those are all right before you ship out the the trade watch to the client you got to make sure that the strap in in this case with with the bracelet if it's going to fit make sure that it gets it it's ready to wear it's sized 
Um, we always set the time, we set the date. So basically, when you open that package, it's ready to be, you know, it's it's risk uh, ready. So um, you know, and then a lot of times I, I find that I I do like most of my talking to my customers is when I'm outside the office when I have that quiet time. You're able to, you know, to, to talk on the phone. I mean. Right. I, it's so busy in the office, though. A lot of times, it, you just can't talk on the phone. You're 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 trying to get watches in. You're trying to get watches out. Uh, you're dealing with the problem. So it's it's like normally when you're not, you know, when you're in a quiet moment, then you could really talk to your clients and get some stuff done and and talk watches was what we really want to do all day. But um, it's hard to do that when you have deadlines to to hit. Yeah, yeah, you know? totally. And it can be a little overwhelming sometimes. But that's when you got the best clients in the world that are, you know, hey, listen text you something, get to me when you get to me, you know, and that's really never more than what, half an hour, 45 right. minutes, you know, maybe 20, sometimes, 20 it can, so. you know, sometimes the guy's like, listen, I'm not back in the office till tomorrow. Don't worry about it. Right. But, uh, you know, e even, even during that. holidays, I mean, I got, I got phone calls on, on the major holidays and it, you know, if it's a good client and you know, he's motivated to do a deal, you know, and he's, you know, he's not, you know, just, you know, obviously he's, he knows that he's taking up your time. So, but, you know, he also knows that, you know, he's a good client and, right. he's, and he's not going to waste your time. I mean, no, no pun intended. And, you know, there's good clients and there's bad clients, but most of the clients after you've had them one or two times and then you kind of, you know, each other and you get along really well and, you know, it, it's good business. Yeah. So, um, I mean, it, it's great. We love it. I go out, I go out of my way to leave the office on Fridays to come do the show and display my cell phone number across the screen. Right. Mm -hmm. So I get guys that are like texting me out of nowhere or calling me and saying, Hey, listen, sorry to bother you on the after hours. Like there are no after hours. Right. I'm 24 seven. I might not pick up your call. I might not be able to answer your text, but it doesn't mean I don't want it. Um, you know, feel yeah. free. We're always willing and, and able to uh, to talk watches and uh, to. It's never you know. a bad time to be making money. Right. 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 Or or making friends and you know talking I mean, about watches. Listen, it's, I'm making money. You're making money, right? If you're talking to me, it's because you're selling something, you're buying something, you're right. in the game. And let's face it, the the idea of what we do is all you know. It's all luxury goods. It's all disposable income. It's play money. It's a hobby. So it should be a fun thing. And we talked about that in the past. And we try and keep it light in the office. You know, we have, I don't, uh, you guys have probably seen our office tour video. We have Marvel statues. We have, you know, people running around with Nerf guns, dartboards. Like, we try and keep it low key because it can become very stressful. And even though right. what we do on a daily basis is very numbers oriented and very goal oriented, and that can be stressful as far as, you know, hitting a certain amount of sales or, or you know, touching a certain amount of clients a month. Um, you know, keeping it light and fun uh, and certainly leaving half on a Friday to come do something like this and just talk with all these guys in the chat uh, helps as well. So Right, and keeping the clients happy and, and keeping you guys happy. I mean, that's our number one goal. And, um, you know, a lot of times that's hard to do because, you know, there there may be certain situations you're dealing in pre-owned watches. And, you know, uh, again, I hate to keep going back to that, but, you know, there was it was short on links, you know what I mean, which, uh, you know, you, you can't always catch. We have sales assistants and, you know, we don't always see things going in and out, but we yeah. try to uh, just to make sure that those type of things don't happen. And, you know, you, you know, obviously when you get the watch, you want to be ready to, you know, you're excited, you want to wear it right away. And uh, we try and avoid at, at all possible costs, uh, you know, right. those little snafus. Well, normally what I'll, I try and do is have my, you know, customer's wrist size on on uh, retainer. On file, yeah. And then, or ask a new customer what it, so I can have it size for them. Because I want you to be able to get the watch, put it on, wear it, um, without having to, you know, run around, spend a whole afternoon trying to find someone to size the watch. Right. Unfortunately, you run into situations like you did today where, you know, it might be short or it's not the right strap. And a lot of those situations, you you catch, right? And some you don't, but it's about making it right. And um, you know, like I always tell my clients, we're not the deal's not done unless we're both happy, right? That's a big part of you know trading. It's a big part of business. So you have you have uh, you know a return policy, obviously. But I don't want to send something, and then you know you feel like aha, he got me. You know, right. we have we have full disclosure. I send videos. I send photos if I can. I you know whatever I can do. So that when it arrives, it's exactly what you expected. And you know what? If you're not happy, send it back. And, I, you know, very rarely do they get to that point, right? We do a great job right. of trying to mitigate that. But we're here, you know. And if I take a trade and your watch is great, but you get my watch and you don't like it, and we're going to reverse the trade. And we're right. not done until we're both happy. And we'll get you into something that, that you're going to be comfortable with or, yeah. or you like. Like, to, to his point, I mean, I try everything in my power to make sure that it's a right fit. If somebody says, oh, you know, what do you think of this watch? 
Um, you know, if I know the client's going to get it and he's not going to like it, I'm not going to sell it to him, obviously. I know that when I was younger, I would sell it uh, because I wanted the sale. Um, but now it's very, very important to make sure that you, you know, you, you understand your client's needs and, you know, you're, you're putting him first and taking care of him that, and that way you don't have 100%. the back and forth of, and then, of the watches. Yeah. I mean, going. it's, it's a long-term goal, right? It's a, Correct. it's all about the long-term. So you hear us in the office and text it. It's not about the first sale. It's not about the it's second sale. It's about the continuing it's about, relationship. It's about me becoming the guy that you, you know, your first thought is I should text Jason and see if he has this watch. Right. Like, what do you think Jason will pay for this watch or Peter at that point? Right. Like I want to be the watch guy. So I tell my guys all the time, if you're standing in front of somebody and you're, you happen to be in Vegas and you like a watch, but you're not sure, or the guy doesn't know what he's talking about, text me, call right. me. You know? Yeah. We're, I mean, we're a good resource. Even if you don't buy from us, you know, I have a lot of my clients say, Hey, what do you think of this? I could pick this up at this. And you know, I want them to be happy and I want them to get a good deal. You know? So even if you, you don't do deals with me every single time, I'm still going to be there to advise you yeah. on, you know, my expertise or, and that's, you know. that's really where, you know, building the rapport and, and understanding where people are coming from and, why they're trading things because it doesn't fit a certain need or why they might want something to fill a certain role um, comes in play. And that really can only be had with one-on-one -on -one conversation. Right, right. right. Um, yeah, and you, you don't want a guy to, uh, to pick up a watch that he already has a duplicate in his collection where you know like you know, a couple months down the road he's going to tell you that, oh, I, I, it doesn't get much wrist time because <laughs> I have the, you know. So I always try and like, you know, hey, what do you got in your collection? Let's balance it out. Yeah, well, um, so the funny thing is like sometimes – I've gained maybe some of the best rapport with customers by like refusing to sell them stuff. Right. You know, I know you have too. Like, you're, you know, I'll say, you know, why you just sold me this watch? Right. Why are you buying it back? It doesn't right. make sense. You're gonna, you're losing twice. Like, or you know, hey, listen, I can understand from what you have in a collection. This is not what you really want. You're gonna call me in three months and try and sell this watch back, and maybe we should just hold off. And you know, some people won't do that because it's shooting yourself in the foot short term, but right. it's not about that. You know, it's about now the guy knows that you're not just blowing smoke. Right. Right. Exactly. And and really, it's not about an act of not blowing smoke. It's about doing the right thing and Correct. making sure that he knows that you're there in the end as well. You know. Right. And, you know, I always tell my clients, it's like, you know, or it's but. Especially if you know him, you say, listen, you're not going to like this. This isn't going to be for you. I know that a month from now you're going to get tired of it. You're going to want to trade it back. So, we, you know, we always try and make sure that, you know, we're doing what's best for everybody involved. And, uh, you know, there's nothing worse than having a client say, oh, I regret selling you that watch. Uh, or, you know, I, I don't know why I bought this from you. So, we, you know, we always try and make sure, especially the clients that we know, we'll make sure that we don't, you know, get in those types of situations because it, it can always be uncomfortable down the road. Um, you know, and, and I made some of those mistakes early on in my career where I bought a watch from somebody and then he's like, oh man, I regret, you know, and, and that's the last thing you really want to hear. I got, yeah. uh, I just want to touch on some stuff that's going on in the chat. Pete does not have a laptop in front of him, so I'm just going to read some of this off. First of all, um, big shout out to the guys that are watching live in our office. I got, uh, David Butler, Austin Tom, uh, Alex Lazarus, Ew. all watching from the office and commenting, uh, Sequan. You all know Sequan. You love Sequan. He's on the chat. As well, if you want to jump on there, uh, all those guys are uh, apparently big fans of seeing P.D. Bell on the, on yeah, the screen. Wow. So they're all giving you shout-outs. I got uh, awesome guys in the chat that are always in here. Um, Ahmad, I see you in there um, sticking up. Ahmad gave me a uh, very highly recommended uh, in the chat, which I appreciate. Good client, good friend. Um, Cap, Captain Zed, see you in the chat uh, talking about Vacheron. Um, the new V3s, which uh, in the blue dials, he mm -hmm. likes them. We like them too. I'm hoping, probably not, but I'm hoping that's kind of a resurgence for Vacheron. We'll get our foot back in the uh, Holy Trinity, maybe. Uh, we'll see. Uh, but I like that watch. Do not buy that watch at retail, Cap, and call me first. Um, we'll talk about. I got uh, Clive is in the chat, Noah, Matt Forrester, as always, um, all kind of talking, uh, talking watches. Always good to see you guys in the chat. I guess Sequan's back. Hello, chat. Hmm. Sequan's going to try and uh, get some sales out of the chat, as Sequan usually does there in Sequan fashion. Um, Zach Rigo, Peter Bell, like the phone company. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, uh, chat's going on crazy. Uh, I hope you guys kind of like this little bit looser format show. We thought it would just be kind of fun to show a few watches, uh, show some stuff that you don't see a lot with these guys, um, go over some kind of just market stuff air a little bit off of chess just so you guys know what we do on a daily basis for you um and for us and uh 
we're watch guys too, you know, and we understand and we like watches. Um, you know, I wouldn't consider myself a collector, but I have a few watches and I like them. And I like looking at watches just like you guys do. So when you guys call and we get to just kind of shoot, you know, shoot the stuff, uh, I'm going to be politically uh, for, for uh, YouTube. You yeah, my guy in the back. Oh, don't do that. No. <laughs> and they were, um, they were worried about me. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, it's fun. And I like talking to watch guys. I like talking to not watch guys you know non-watch guys the first watch you know what do i do how do i get into the market how do I, that's a totally different conversation different show uh maybe we'll have you on and talk about that yeah, also that'd be great but it's all educational it's all you know the entire point of watchbox studios is all educational the entire point of the classroom right we just aired classroom number season two yeah. Did you see the, yeah, nice. the john callahan yeah. yes yes i watched nice. that yesterday uh rolex terminology john callahan um I don't know, you know, if we got a new uh, editing budget or something that we don't have on this show. This is a TV, if you guys can't. But um, the classroom has got graphics yeah, and very, bezels rolling well across the screen. It, it was amazing. Yeah. So uh, movie quality. There you go. Yeah, it was very um, educational. But, uh, yeah, it's all it's all love. It's all watch love and education. You got Tim doing crazy monologues off the top of his head and talking mm -hmm. about, you know, every single part of the watch you could possibly think about and uh i couldn't for one uh you know hope to aspire to what tim does but i'm glad that i get to come on here and work with guys like this and josh and the guys in the chat and all that and talk about watches so. yeah and, and a good point you brought up was when you talk to a client and you're t and you know you're talking about watch love uh you know you learn a lot from your clients too as well i mean a lot of my clients obviously know you know their knowledge is is greater than than, than mine and I always love hearing what they have to say about different watches you learn something new every day whether you're telling somebody or you know somebody's telling you something it's always great to hear something new and learn something you know especially about watches and yeah what's... and you know what's nuts is that you think you know a lot mm -hmm. and then there you talk to a guy that's just a watch guy that because that, the thing is like you can be a jack of all trades and know a lot about a lot but then there's a guy that'll spend you know three months researching one watch right or three weeks or whatever the case might be or you get a tim type character that just knows every single thing about that one watch and and you learn something new right i learn from clients all the time yeah and guy will ask me hey what do you think about this watch i'm like huh yeah never heard of it what, yeah. what, you know and you learn about watches and that's great for me because i love watches so, yeah and you, know. and you love to you, like you love to hear you love hearing from certain clients that you know that you're going to get something out of the conversation. Hey, I haven't heard from you in a while. How you doing? You know, you know, all your clients become your friends, yeah. and uh, you know, they always have something good to say about you know the, the watches and uh, that they bought or watches they want to buy. And you know, it's always been a good experience to uh, to to talk about watches and and be in this industry. So we're, we're very blessed. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so and you know, to do something that's a little bit off the beaten path, I, I always. Right. I kind of always think of it that way. Like I'm, I'm happy to do something that I enjoy, but is also off the beaten path. Right. You tell, you know, someone asks what you do, and you, you tell them, and then they're like, "Huh, I didn't even know that market existed for watches." You yeah. Know, it's just like real estate or cars or. So. You know, guys that that are into watches are the guys that run the world. You know, they make the world spin. They make the world go around. So it's, it's always good. Guys. Yeah, it's always good to you know talk to guys like that and find out. You know, we have CEOs from all over the world. They're lawyers, doctors, Indian chiefs. Right. Um, you know, very fascinating, and and that's probably the most rewarding part of our job is talking to these type of clients. Right. Yeah. People that you know you can't hope to possibly get on a phone call with this guy, and he's calling you. Right. You know, like I I've talked I, I have a, a really big client. He's a one. Um, CEO of the the biggest, uh, uh, well, I probably shouldn't say it, but as soon as we stop talking about watches, he has to get off the phone. If we're talking about watches, he'll talk for hours. And you know that the guy's got to be one of the busiest guys in the world, yeah. but just wants to talk watches. If you talk anything else, he's like, oh, I got to go. And that, <laughs> and that's it. So yeah, Sometimes busy is important, right? He's got to make right. the money to buy the watches. Right, exactly. All right, guys. I hope you liked that show. I thought it, I liked it a lot. You know, I'm not gonna lie. I didn't drag. There was no lulls in the middle. Thought it went well. You let me know what you think in the comments. The chat's still going, so you guys are active. It's awesome having yes. Peter Bell on there. Good to be um, on. Again. I do want to check the poll one more time before we leave. Peter's probably winning with that six thousand dollar Breitling, uh, which is very cool. Oh, still. You oh, know what? Nice. Why aren't Why isn't anybody voting? Thirty four votes. I'm gonna take that as a personal insult. And uh, that's probably because Josh's robots 
that vote 100 times a minute for him are not active on the show right now because he's in Vegas with more important things to do. Yes. Um, all right, great. Friday night, we're going to get out of here. We're going to cut it loose. These guys are already turning off the lights. So uh, remember, comment, subscribe, EvoX4B11 on Instagram. You got my cell phone number. I think Peter Bell's number is coming up on the screen. Call me leave. anytime. Uh, buy, sell, trade. Call us. Let us know. Thanks again. Thanks, guys. Ciao.